we just did, secant and cosecant, those are reciprocal functions. You take the function and you flip it over. So just a reminder, um, which I know you know this already, but I'm just going to remind you before we talk about these. Um, sine of theta is y over r. And when we do the unit circle, it's y over 1, because the radius of the unit circle is 1, making it a unit circle, right? So that's why sine is just y. But when we first learned it, of course, it's opposite over hypotenuse. When you put it on a graph, the hypotenuse is always the radius. So that's where the y over r comes from. Now, if we're talking about its reciprocal function, we're talking about cosecant. Cosecant is r over y. Everybody good? Because it is flipped over. That is the reciprocal function. But now I'm talking about inverse functions. A reciprocal is not the same thing as an inverse. An inverse is so, a reciprocal is something flipped over. A reciprocal, um, but an inverse is when you switch x and y. And we have done that since the beginning of algebra two. We started switching x and y and finding the inverse. If you remember. Or you will, I know you remember this. If I have x squared, what is the inverse of squaring something? Square, square rooting, right? So y equals x squared is quadratic, and its inverse is the square root of x. Everybody remembers doing that. They're opposite of each other. Now, we didn't really spend a lot of time on this one in Algebra 2, but you have this one too, x cubed, and the inverse of it is the cube root of x. Those are inverse functions of one another. Their x and y columns in a table would be switched. So that's what this is about. It's about the inverse, fun inverse circular functions. And when we say circular functions, we mean going around the unit circle. So this is, which wave is that? That's the sine wave. That's the sine wave because it starts up first, like the snow of the snow cone. That's the sine wave. So they're asking us by either interchanging the coordinates, switching x and y, or by reflecting over y equals x to draw the inverse, to sketch the inverse. Now, if you remember back in Algebra 2, and I think even a little bit at the beginning of this year when we talked about inverses, we reflected them. You have these mirrors, these little red plastic mirrors, and you would set them down and you would reflect it. Now what's important is what it reflects across. Because I did this earlier in the other two pre-cal classes and I watched about 50% of the students put this in the wrong place. That won't help you. Where am I supposed to put this if I'm going to use it? Which is what? What's another name of that? The linear parent function. The linear parent function. Or on the diagonal, right? I would have to set it like that. Not like this. That doesn't help me because it reflects across this. And I could sketch what the picture would look like. That's one way to do this is look in the reflection and sketch it. The other way, and this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm a horrible grapher. You all know that. But the other way to do it is to interchange the coordinates. So I'm going to find a few critical points. I'm going to use this point and this one and this one and this one and this one. And I think that would be enough. And I will switch x and y and graph what it looks like. So this point is almost negative 3, 0. So I'm going to go to 0, almost negative 3, and put a dot. Just switching x and y. Everybody with me? So then this one down here looks like about, neg it looks like negative 1 and a half, negative 1. So I'm going to go negative 1 and a half, negative 1. So right here. 0, 0 switch to still 0, 0. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and connect these dots. Then I'll do this one. That looks like 1 and a half, 1. So I'm going to go 1 and a half, 1. And this looks like a little, just barely more than 3, 0. So that one would be right here. So it looks like this. It looks good. That's not too bad for my graphing ability. I could continue further, but that's enough. 
because I can use that to answer question number two. I just graphed the inverse. The definition of inverse is switching x and y, which is exactly what I just did. So I just graphed the inverse of sine, which we also call arc sine, by the way. Or sine to the negative 1, inverse sine, yes. That's how we undo sine. Mm -hmm. Okay, is everybody good? Nobody's confused about which function we're graphing. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, why is it not a function? <laughs> it fails the vertical line test. So it's not a function. So what can that tell you before you ever touch any buttons on your calculator? It's not going to do that. It's not going to look like that. But very much like this, when we did these, you know what a quadratic looks like, yes? It's like this. If you inverse a quadratic, it would look like this. When you put that in your calculator, is that what it looks like? Because what does your calculator do? It just takes the bottom off so that it can graph it. Your calculator is going to do the exact same thing with arc sine. It is going to make it a function that it can graph. It's going to limit the domain. If it does that, just like this, we limit the domain just to the positive side. That way when we reflect it, it's just one-sided. The same thing happens here when we need to, reflect, we need to do our inverse. The, the calculator is just going to limit it. So we can put it in our calculator and look at what it's going to look like. So I'm doing arc sine of x. And it just looks like that. It just cut off the rest of it. If you look at what mine looks like, it just went this far. It just went to these points right here. Because anything back towards that other direction, and all of a sudden it would fail the vertical line test. So it went as far as it can go without failing the vertical line test. So when you look at these in your calculator, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a function with a restricted domain so that it'll graph, so that it'll be a function. So it looks like this, roughly. The same thing is going to happen to cosine, and it makes perfect sense if you think about it, it's still a wave. If you reflect it, it's still going to be a wave. It's still going to fail the vertical line test. So the calculator is going to restrict the domain so that it can graph it. So it's going to look very similar, but let's look at the differences. What's different about this one? It's the opposite direction. It's falling, which makes sense because cosine is falling to start with because it's the cone piece, right? Well, it's shifted up, which also makes sense because cosine starts at 1, where sine starts at 0, cosine starts at 1. So it also makes sense that it's falling. So these are the things that you're going to have to recognize to be able to recognize arc sine and arc cosine, or the graphs of those. All right. On the back page. Really? Be the, yeah, should be the asymptotes, 
So that's what it did is it restricted the domain to the half pies, which means that's now the range of the inverse function. Is everybody good? Everybody good on the difference between a reciprocal function and an inverse function? Yeah. All right. And if I say arc sine, you know what I mean, right? That was it. It's inverse, which is in, what's another way of saying it? Arc. What, or arc. Or, or how would you say it in your calculator? Sine to the negative one. I said it earlier. I said arc sine, and somebody was like, "What is that?" Oh no! I don't say that. All right, we'll start there tomorrow.